we talk about projection and it, it there's certainly a different amount of projection needed at different positions right we talk about projecting less at quarterback because and, and I, I think the reason why we were able to do that now is because the offenses run in high school and college the the gap in terms of, of scheme is not quite what it used to be you know it used to be like even 15 years ago, you got all these teams running wing T out there. It's like, all right, can this guy go play? And it, like now, no, man, everybody runs a spread. Almost all of these kids play seven on seven. So we don't need to project quite as much. And luckily for us, we're able to rely more on the data. If you're a 55% passer in high school, I, it's going to be a tough argument for me to put a four-star grade on that kid. And unless the team around him is just absolutely horrid, you know, um, that's, that's interesting to me. Whereas tackle is a position that still involves a whole lot of physical projection. And, and, and you better, because sometimes the kids who are already 330 are, are maxed out. And if it is our goal, which it is here at 24-7, to project these kids from high school all the way through the league, because we're the league and, and the draft is how we are viewing our rankings, right? Like that, the league is sort of our, our check and balance here. Uh, we, we need to project significant upside with that tackle position. You know, we might do it a little bit differently if we were only concerned about college production. If we were only concerned about college production, I'd probably be in our, our rankings meeting, standing on the table for some of these guys who have a little bit higher floor, but certainly a lot lower ceiling. Well, and, and this is like I, I, I try to take the, the the opportunity every chance I get to 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 make sure that we hammer home what our philosophy is, and that's and in that sense, like I I actually could kind of care less what these guys do in the NFL. But I'm obsessed with where they're going to get drafted. Right. Because to me, where they're going to get drafted is ultimately the the real only measurable metric of what their college career was. Like the only like the only actual objective way of of actually grading out how someone's college career fared. I guess you I mean, yes, there are other ways. You could you could go turn to production, you could turn to just like all conference awards or something like that. But I think those those fall short of what we're trying to accomplish in rankings, which is is evaluate for talent and ability. And in terms of and that's all the NFL is looking at talent and ability based on what you did in college. Like how how talented and capable do we think you are based on what you put on tape and what we know about you as a prospect? And so we use NFL GMs, NFL scouting departments as the means to find a grade for those for those rankings. And so. You're, I think you make a great point, and and I think it's it extends. It's, it's even interesting to see it extend now into, like this will be this is what the third straight year we've had a Heisman Trophy uh, winner be drafted number one overall. Do you remember back when the Heisman Trophy was like a total kiss of death for oh, yeah. NFL success? Like it was just it was just a given. If you win the Heisman, you're going to be a bust because what you need to do in college to be successful at the quarterback position is different from what you do in the NFL to be successful at the quarterback position. I think I think. You're like the no longer do you have to have a translator for what uh, a good quarterback looks like in high school versus college versus the NFL. Because, look, I'll be honest with you. I don't watch a lot of NFL based pure, not because I don't want to, but because purely I don't have the time to watch all football day on Sunday, given the work we have to do, plus Saturday and Friday obligations we have watching football as well. So if I had to. If I if I was an NFL if I was trying to project a college kid to the NFL, and I had to sort of find a translator to tell me, well, what is is this work in an NFL system? I don't know. Like this is that that's 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 gone. That's like antiquated. Now all of a sudden, NFL is being forced to to accommodate these more spread style quarterbacks, and the spread is sort of filtered trickled. I guess up from high school to college and out of the NFL, and now they're just picking the best player, and it's refreshing because you don't have to act like it's some, you know, like you have to don't have to be bilingual in terms of how you view these quarterbacks. It's just hey, if he's if he is if he can be the best player on the field in high school, if he can be the best player on the field in college, he can probably be the best player on the field in the NFL too. And that has changed so recently. I, I remember I, I wrote a piece on. Like, will could Jared Goff be the first air raid quarterback to not be like a total bust? And all the Elite Eleven guys were like, "Man, Jared Goff's got the goods." And and I still don't know if he does. Like, it seems like McVay has to read the defense for him and call his play. And 
all that stuff Belichick did to him that all, all the other teams started to copy where they, you know, they shift late once the headset clicks off. But the point is, like, Jared Goff's not a bust, right? Like, he may not be amazing, but now these air raid guys are, they're accepted. And, like, it's okay because these teams are incorporating more and more concepts, like you said. 